So welcome everybody to today's um, session of uh, virtual bridges that um, we've been invited to do this morning. So my name is Jan Lowe from Dundee and Angus College and Claire Masterton is also um, with me today. Hello. Uh, hello. Oh Claire, thank you. So today we're just going to look at some of Microsoft Teams updated features to improve the student experience. I know um, a lot of people are using Teams. We thought it'd be quite nice to go through it. Now, when we're doing sessions within college, we've been um, we're part of the Learning and Digital Resources team, and we've been um, supporting a lot of the tutors to um, take the steps forward for remote delivery that they're doing. So we um, recommend to the tutors that they ask um, their students to you know, have a look at the controls that are available, but to ask people to mute their microphones and switch off their cameras if they don't want to be seen on any video recordings that are going on. And also it just um, keeps a calm presence when you're de um, delivering. By all means, if you want to keep your microphone and your um, camera on at the moment, do so. But I think you'll know yourself sometimes it just cuts off that um, background noise. So we like to ask people to do that. So today we're just going to have a quick look at some of the new meeting experiences that are in Microsoft um, Teams. And you may have already seen these. What I'll do is I'll talk through them and then we'll do a little bit of a live demo of them to let you see how these work and we'll let you know how you update these settings as well. And when we've been using them, we found that staff at Dundee and Angus College um, feel that it'll it's good when they're doing the team meetings and also feel that when they're going to go live with their students, it'd be a great way to sort of feel together with them. Also, we'll be looking at use of um, might turn and light just very briefly within it and also whiteboards and teams. So the new meeting experiences within Microsoft Teams. One thing we like to do, a lot of staff have been saying, how do I know if my students have been engaging in the sessions that I'm running, coming to my meetings. Well, meeting organisers like myself, we can take an attendance. So in the participants list, when you go to the meeting and call controls and you click on that little icon of the people, when you click on the little three dots of more actions, you'll be able to download the attendance report and we can show you a little bit further about that. So that's really good. Like we say to the um, lecturer, whether the people are engaging or not, or gone off and had a cup of tea or working on the phone, we don't know. So there's other ways that we've been um, encouraging tutors to engage their learners while they're in the meeting, doing things like little Padlet um, surveys and other tools that they can use just to get them engaged. So the meetings and call controls, we just mentioned that a little while ago. We can, once you um, set the updates, your meeting and call controls window are showing at the top right hand side and they're docked there so you always have access to them. Previously before, um, if you haven't done this update, they were floating around the middle of your screen and that could be a little bit off-putting and you were jiggling your mouse around. So now they're docked at the top with easy access. So we found that that's quite a, um, a good tool when you've updated it to use. Also, I don't know if you've seen this, um, the meeting notes, you can take notes directly in the meetings notes tab. So again, in the more op options, you can do show meetings notes and it will um, pop up. So a lot of people have been using that and finding that a um, popular function for them to use. There's also the live captions options that are at the bottom centre of the meeting screen instead of left for better readability and they're in English only and some users may find that this is helpful. Now the large gallery view, if you haven't seen this, is um, what I was um, discussing. So the large gallery view now lets you see up to 49 video streams at once. So it's available when there's 10 or more attendees within your um, video. So I say shortly we'll do a little demonstration of this and get you all to put on your cameras and do a, a little um all. We've also got together mode. So especially in this um, remote delivery that we're all moving into, 
we can have it like so that we're all sitting in the lecture theatre. Um, and I know um, Claire herself, she um, teaches 0.5 of um, the time in college and she's really keen to use this with our learners. So because a lot of them might not meet each other face to face at all until who knows. So it's quite a good way for them all to sit and look like they're all sitting learning together in the theatre. The focus mode, once you do this update, it lets you um, focus on what's being shared. So sometimes when I'm sharing this presentation, you may have other things floating about at the bottom and the right. So if you clicked on the three buttons and looked for, and for the more options and looked on focus, it would just have the PowerPoint there. And I find that's um, especially good. You know, um, especially, you know, the screen that I'm using is a bit smaller sometimes um, and you're looking in and you think there's an awful lot hanging about there. So that focus mode is a really good thing to show the students as well if they're um, concentrating on a presentation or video that you're showing. So how do you do these new experiences? So you'll need to update them and then reset your um, laptop or PC. So you may want to do this after the session. So at the top right of your Teams page, you'll have your icon. I've got my picture on mine. And then you go down to settings. This will give you the settings box that pops up. And what you want to do is turn on new meeting experiences. New meetings and calls will open in a separate windows and requires restarting Teams. So once you do that, it will take you through and you'll have these new experiences. Just while we're on it, I don't know if you're aware that um, Immersive Reader is also available within Microsoft Teams. Um, Immersive Reader itself um, is just amazing in Microsoft. But if you're looking at personal or a group chat or a channel within Immersive um, within Teams, it, with, if you click at the three dots at the side of any message that you've received, you'll be able to click Immersive Reader and it will read out the message to you. So that's a really positive function on Microsoft Teams that people may be able to use. So what we thought I might do now is just do a little live demo for you, if that's OK with everyone. And then I'm going to sh share my desktop. So can I ask, can you all see my desktop? Yeah. Yes, John, we can see. That's great. Can I ask everybody, please, if you'd like to participate, to switch your camera on and your microphone on as well, if you wish, and we can all just shout hello to each other. So what I'm going to do is click on my three dots here. I'm going to go to the last gallery view. And we now have a nice bunch of people <laughs> to wave to each other. <laughs> So I think you'll see that that's really nice to see. The other option is the together mode. And we're all sitting in the lecture theatre as well. So we may be far apart, a lot more than two metres, but we're all here together. So it's really nice to see everybody. I may have met quite a few. Back to large gallery view. You know, and then I'll go back to gallery. So if I can ask you to turn your video and microphones off again at the moment, that would be fantastic. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shop, stop sharing this screen. And I shall share my presentation again. So now I'm going to pass over to Claire Masterton and she's going to talk to you a little bit about Turn It In Light that we've um, added to Teams and to the whiteboard function there. Thank you, Claire. OK, thank you very much, Jan. Um, um, OK, so many of you might have used Turn It In before, um, either as part of an LMS such as Blackboard or Moodle, or, or you might have used it on its own. Um, and it's a fully functioning, fantastic way of checking for plagiarism, but also as well um, for grading and for leaving online comments. Um, Within Teams, uh, we have what's called Turnitin Lite. Now, it's not got the full functionality that Turnitin has. However, um, sitting within Teams, it's very effective. When you're within Teams, um, you can set up an assignment. 
um, which the students again can upload work to. As a tutor, when you set that assignment up, you have the option of adding in turn it in light. Once you do that um, and you open up the students work, you can check plagiarism there and then. So you're doing it all within one system. You're not jumping from system to system. You can check the plagiarism within there. Um, again, once you see that plagiarism report, you can then decide whether that's acceptable or not as a, a tutor. What you can also do as well is when you're within um, the piece of work that the student submitted, like with the full turn inversion, you can actually make comments um, within the, the paper. Um, so again, it's one of those things that's reasonably new. Um, it's come into Teams, but the fact that it's actually integrated within it, uh, I don't know how many of you actually use Turnitin, not as, as part of an LMS, but it's a completely, completely separate um, entity in terms of Turnitin's website, but this avoids jumping from, um, you know, system to system. And as I say, it gives you the option when you set up an assignment for a student within Teams that you can switch on or you can switch it off. Um, so it's really powerful. Certainly for us, with our students within Dundee and Angus College, um, we have HN students who are going on to university who will you know come across plagiarism checkers mostly turn it in when they go there so it's good practice we've found to get them used to this you know fairly early on things like graded units for example we want to obviously check that but we also use this and we recommend using this with our lower level learners again just to get them used to you know the way of writing of you know not necessarily fully referencing but they start it you know as soon as possible by the time they come onto hn um, you know, it's just one of those things that, um, that, that, that they're used to. So definitely something to check out, um, you know, within Teams. Uh, it's, it's really good. Jan, can I pass back to you to move to the next slide? OK, um, the next thing I want to mention is whiteboard. Now, I've actually done a little video just to demonstrate this um, that Jan will play in just a moment. The whiteboard is an online interactive tool within um, office.com. There is an integrated version into Teams. Um, however, the only downside about that is it does have limited functionality. And when you're recording, if you're recording your screen um, within Teams, you're recording the meeting, the whiteboard doesn't actually show up the, when you're using it within Teams. So what we would always do is recommend um, going to open the whiteboard app. So if you go into office.com and just log in with your credentials as usual, um, you can open up from there and it then gives you the option to open the app that then has full functionality and it can be recorded now what Jan's about to play in just a second is a recording that I did using Microsoft Teams to actually record the whiteboard which was on a different uh, screen which was open through the web browser um, Jan can I get you to play that video for me please it's on the next screen thank you to open up the whiteboard go to office.com and um, you're better using the whiteboard app than using whiteboard that's sitting within Microsoft Teams if you use the whiteboard that sits within Microsoft Teams when you record your screen it doesn't show up plus there's more functionality within the whiteboard and um, within office.com once you're in there click on create new whiteboard and at the bottom of a menu with various different functions for example, this one here is the inking mode. So we have different pen options, different colours of pen, there's highlighter, there's ruler. Um, so to click and write, click on a pen and just write. Just change colour of pen, click on the different colour of pen. Um, and again, you can just write on there. To go back to the menu, click on the little um, tick button. Next is add text. So when you click on that text box, it opens up. And you could just type in there again. You can move that around um, if you want to do that. Next is the add a post it note. So again, once it appears, we can move it and just type into it. Next in the bottom is add an image. So you can add an image from your own library or from Bing, or you can actually have the camera. So I'm going to click into library image. This will take me into my own files. And then again, all you need to do is just click on the file that you want. And again, you can move that around. Next is the insert menu. You've got the option of a note grid, a list, follow ups, templates, PDFs, Word documents and PowerPoint documents. So again, maybe if you've done something with your students and um, you want to maybe add that in. 
OK, so I'm going to put in just to let you see um, a list that pulls up a list. And again, all you need to do is just type into that. To share your whiteboard, if you go to the top, you'll see invite someone. And um, so again, I can create a link to share and it's now creating that share link. So I can then invite people to come along um, and to actually do um, do that. OK, thank you, Jan. Um, hopefully that gave you an idea of some of the functionality of that. Um, you know, again, it allows if you share this with your student and you invite them to participate, it actually allows, you know, um, collaboration in real time, uh, you know, with your students. One of the things that it could be useful for maybe is, for example, induction that students maybe do reintroduction about themselves, you know, on a post it note, um, you know, or if you're teaching where you would normally use a whiteboard, for example, I'm an economics lecturer and I love diagrams. <laughs> um, if you're doing that, you can, you know, draw the diagram up on that whiteboard in real time, the way you would do with maybe a smart board or a genie board. OK, Jan, do you want to go to the next slide for me, please? So there's plenty of help within Teams and um, Microsoft are constantly, constantly changing all the time and adding new things that literally is on a day by day basis. When you're within Teams on your menu um, down the left hand side, you'll see a little um, question mark with help underneath. If you click on that, um, the next menu you'll see in the, the middle of our PowerPoint slide that has topics, training, what's new. So topics, if you want specifically more information about a particular functionality of Teams, whether that's a chat function or again, it could be whiteboard. If you go in there, there's lots of help guides uh, and they really are really good. Training, again, there's lots of resources there to actually help you uh, guide your way through. And Jan and I have to say, this is our favourite. The next one is the what's new. Um, Keep an eye in there because anything new, and as I say, it's literally happening happening on a day by day basis. Anything new that's within Microsoft Teams comes up there. Um, one of the, and again, we're actually quite excited about this. Um, one of the new features that's coming uh, next month is breakout rooms within Teams. If any of you have used Zoom before, uh, you might have come across the breakout rooms and they're fantastic, for example, for students doing group work. Uh, we've been hoping that that would come for a while. And um, it's worth, by the way, you can Google this going on to the Teams user voice because what you'll see there is various different people are asking for different functionality into Teams. They vote on it um, and then, you know, hopefully Teams eventually, Microsoft do eventually roll these out. So this is one that's, you know, been asked for, for quite a bit. So that's coming out next month. Um, as I say, for student group work, you know, if you've got a class, you want to put them into smaller groups and then go around the groups. It's a good way as well, I think, um, that students will be able to get to know each other. Because in this new era, you know, of online delivery, nobody's meeting anybody face to face, you know, so to put small numbers of students into a breakout room to work together, maybe an activity or a small project, I think will be really beneficial, you know, for them getting to know each other uh, and working together. OK, Jan. Yeah, so that's um, what we wanted to share with you today. We hope that you found um, that useful. If anybody's got any questions, we can certainly answer any questions, well, have a chat with you about any questions you may have and we may know the answer or we're not. As um, Ken just said, I do like a question, but um, as you know, Microsoft Teams is so massive. I learn something new every time, every time I open it, I think. So if anybody's got anything they'd like to ask at the moment, please, we can chat amongst ourselves and see how we get on. Thank you. I think Jason has raised his hand. Hi, Jason. Jason, if you want to put your microphone on, we can take your question if you want to ask. My microphone wasn't unmuting, strangely enough, it just has now. Um, yeah, and done so. Um, I'll kick things off then by saying, are there any obvious gaps and features still remaining that's, uh, that you've come across? I think for us initially, um, it was the breakout rooms. That's certainly from the lecturing staff within Dundee and Angus College. That's one thing they have been asking for. Um, you know, thankfully that that is coming. But that certainly is the, the thing that we have been asked for quite a bit. Sorry, um, it's Sam Sterling uh, from Dundee and Angus College here. I just wanted to let you know that uh, Microsoft released it to the sector um, two nights ago, and we're hoping to have breakout rooms available by the end of September. Excellent. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. You know, one thing we've been um, showing staff as well is, um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, peppering their um, session with things like 
little padlets to get some feedback from students anonymous. They can use polypole within teams, you know, so that when you're doing a session, you know, half an hour there, I'm um, chatting to everybody was a little bit of a, a long time. So you can imagine if you've got your class for an hour, an hour and a half, just having that interaction with them, even getting them to type into the comments is a very good thing. And I'd be interested to know if anybody else has got any tips of what they've been doing or suggesting to use. Um, Doug, uh, Douglas Bell, I can see you've got your hand up. Do you want to put your microphone yep, on it, I, please? I, I was interested in the uh, immersive reader uh, feature, and I just wondered if there are any other accessibility features built into Teams such as um, text accompanying videos or that type of thing? Claire, do you, um, I know within, um, Claire can um, confirm this with me. If you record the session like, as we're doing here, you can um, certainly share the transcript of the stream video. Yes. And we've done that. Sam, you've got your hand up. You got anything to add? Yeah, it was just to say that if you record the video in stream, it'll give you the captions and the text so that will make you fully compliant with public sector website bodies accessibility regulations. Um, so that will that is available. Yeah, and you can share that. Um, the only thing with that at the moment with Stream is that you can only share it with somebody who is a member of your organisation. You can't share it out with. Um, what we're having to do for some of our videos that are um, open to everybody is to put them on YouTube. What's not 100% ideal, but um, at least it's giving people the access to them and then directing them back to us once they become a member of the college. One thing I noticed is that when you have the recording in Stream, um, and you get the transcript, obviously, for it, which you can edit quite easily. Um, sometimes it's easier to download the transcript and then edit it rather than going through it um, line by line. But uh, you can also search in a video based on the transcript that's there. So if you remember someone that was speaking about a specific thing, you can actually search for that piece of text and it will find it and then take you to that exact point in the video, which is, uh, which is pretty good. Everybody else? So I, I think, um, although it was answered in the text, uh, Ismara had asked the question, do you download the new version by clicking settings from your profile icon? And I think, Claire, you had responded. Yes, yes. So again, as Jan demonstrated, um, you know, through the presentation, to get all the new features, if you click on your profile picture, go into settings, and then as Jan showed, it's the, the tick box at the bottom. Once you do that, however, you need to restart your PC for all of those functions um, to, to kick in. I know the breakout rooms are a very popular function. Um, as Sam has said, uh, it's actually been released early to the educational sector. Um, and I believe that some institutions uh, have access from mid-September this month uh, going forward. So if you're amongst the lucky few, <laughs> you'll I be seeing so. the breakout rooms first. <laughs> OK, so we have um, enough time for perhaps uh, one more question uh, from the group. Um, if you want to raise your hand or or unmute your mic and and ask our team here, I know Douglas, you still have your hand up. You might have a second question. Who knows? <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, um, Jan, what what do you think is? Can you give a good tip to get people involved with teams? This is this is in terms of like working with students. How do you get students to be relaxed? Uh, inside this kind of Teams environment? Like uh, even the simplest thing of how do you encourage people to share their cameras? Um, do you have any tips around that? I th um, as I'm showing you there, when we do the um, the together mode and the large gallery view, I think that's quite nice because they think, oh, it's not just going to be me on there, it's going to be a few people. So, you know, when you're doing inductions, if you can show them this when you're on Teams, and as I say, Claire herself, um, um, teaches um, point five, and I know that she's planning to encourage that. Clara, you wanted to add to that? Yes, absolutely. Um, again, in the last, our, our students come back um, a week on Monday, our business students, I, I teach economics, and we've done in the student inductions, we've taken them through teams and spoken to them about it. And the Lena Digital Resources team have um, done some inductions again for students on how to use teams. But as Jan says, I think one of the things um, we were using this before the summer holidays, um, but in a very, very sort of like brief kind of way, very limited functionality kind of way. And one of the things the students said to me was initially that they felt quite isolated, even being on an online lesson with me. 
um, because they didn't see each other. As Jan said, I think having the, the large gallery view, you know, and the together mode, I think does make them feel were part of something as if they were sitting in a lecture theatre. And I think also as well, the breakout rooms are going to do that as well. Where because they're in small groups, nobody wants to I mean, nobody wants to talk in front of 35 people online when they've just met them. Um, but I think having the breakout rooms will make a big difference to that as well, of getting the students working together and getting to know each other. Because a big part of being a student is, you know, the social side of it as well, you know, is meeting new friends. And I think that will definitely help. Absolutely. OK. Brilliant. Um, I'm, uh, um, unfortunately, that's all we have time for for this recorded part of the virtual bridge session. But um, thanks to you, Jan. Thanks to you, Claire, uh, for sharing with us. And maybe when we have breakout rooms, we should invite you back to explain about that. Absolutely. <laughs> delighted. Okay. Well, until then, um, hopefully um, we can uh, stay safe and make the most of all the new features in MS Teams. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, stay thank safe. you. Thank you.